Hey everyone, welcome to the freshwater version of the weekly update. There are a lot of really cool freshwater fish that have come in this week. So I'm gonna show you maybe a little more than I typically do even for the elongated video. Um, really, really some crazy things. As you can see behind me, all the construction is going on. This will ideally be your last week to shop the old store. Uh, this time next week, we should be in a completely brand new 10,000 square foot store. So it doesn't get much more exciting than this for us because it's going to enable us to spread everybody out to show you a lot more than what we've been able to. And my favorite thing that is coming really soon is the rock room. A lot of you have requested over the years, wouldn't it be great to have a room that we could actually have a display table where there was rock and driftwood and all kind of things that you could put together on that table and kind of pre-assemble, pre-design your aquarium. Well, it's happening and it's the coolest new feature of the store other than the size. So this time next week, you should be able to come in and play with whatever designs your imagination can dream up. And uh, let's get on to the update. Given the fact so many new freshwater fish came in this week, I'm gonna bypass any idle chatter and jump right into the fish and plants. Come on. Okay, we're starting with the Praycox rainbows. Everybody knows rainbows are one of my favorite fish, both for their color, both for their survivability, their hardiness, their compatibility with other things. Well, the Praycox rainbow is one of the prettiest of the rainbows that we get in. And these have nowhere near colored up what they will ultimately be but you can start to see the red on the fins, the turquoise in the body. This is a beautiful fish, especially with nice light. If you look down around them, all the Jack, all the electric blue Jack Dempsey's have come out. This is how many electric blue Jack Dempsey's we got this week. They are at the cheapest price that I have ever had them. They are beautiful, they're lively, they came in eating. We just got them this morning. Uh, fantastically beautiful fish. Okay, about three weeks ago, we showed the honeycomb catfish. Geez, I hope they're not venomous. Um, and this week, we finally got them back in. They sold out immediately when, when we first got them. So if you saw them in that video, these are actually even a little bit bigger. They have a jaguar spotted body type as far as the colors. Some are actually more white. Some are more yellow. This little guy right here is gorgeous. And this is just a phenomenal little fish. As you can see, they'll go perfectly fine in a small community tank. Beautiful, beautiful catfish. I mean, just one of the best. The Blue Moon Lobster. Very, very beautiful lobster slash crayfish. Uh, we don't typically get too often. This, this uh, lobster comes from Papua New Guinea. It is, the cool thing about this are the claws. They almost have crescent moon shape on the claws themselves. I don't know if you can see it very well in the picture, but lots of different color variations of blue with spots in the central part of the body. So phenomenal crayfish there. The yellowtail barracuda came in this week. Really beautiful fish. Probably not so much for the community tank, but for the semi-aggressive tank, I'm sure it would be a very good fit. Uh, obviously yellow on the tail and toward the back end. Beautiful fish, and if statement maker just because it is a type of freshwater barracuda. Okay, so about two or three weeks ago, we also got this catfish, which is the Ashara catfish. Uh, if you'll remember, it's the one that has kind of a sail fin, dorsal fin. Beautifully spotted jaguar type a catfish as well that gets a bit larger uh, not for the simple small community tank but for a, a semi-aggressive community tank it would be fantastic uh, the one that came in sold right away and I've been trying to work to get a couple more I think I got two this week but this is a very beautiful catfish more for the ornateness of the fins than anything else. If you didn't get a chance to get it a couple of weeks ago when we had one, we have one or maybe two this week. Okay, so I got in a show size vampire pleco. Look at that guy. Beautiful, beautiful pleco that needs to be housed in a tank with a little bit larger fish. You can see based on the size of my hand, the fish itself, but very tame, very relaxed pleco. Beautiful, really, really cool. Marbled gobies came in this week. Very cool to house in with these geophagus that you see. 
uh, bottom dwelling fish that's going to primarily take most of its food from the bottom. Every one of the marble gobies has a little bit different marbling pattern, so very cool in that respect. They have almost like a frog-like face. Um, if you come, you'll see a few over there, so definitely check these out as well. If you've got a semi-aggressive tank, something with a little, that's a little bit bigger, but not too aggressive, they'll fit right in. I don't know when the last time I had Cuban cichlids in, but this week I have a breeding pair. Now, I don't know whether you can see it really good in the video, but under the right light, this is electric blue mixed with black. Uh, the way it's marbled in with the fish, obviously two different patterns on both fish, but a really, really cool pair of cichlids that are not that expensive. Okay, we sell out of these every week when we get them, but I was able to get a few this week, the Spotted Pictus Cat. These are great bottom-dwelling catfish for semi-aggressive tanks. They move kind of like in a shark-like pattern, the way that their body moves across the bottom. They primarily will stay on the bottom. Uh, really, really cool fish. Iridescent sharks are finally back in stock. Now, this is an Asian type of catfish. It's not a true shark at all. However, it does have this very similar as the Pictus Cat, and the Bala shark, it has that kind of swimming pattern uh, where it moves from side to side from the center body and gives it that shark-like appearance. So these are very, very cool. Typically these come in really large, but I've got the perfect size clown knife fish. Now these, these can go in with a community tank as long as the fish are fairly, have got a decent size to them. It is predatory, so it will eat whatever it can swallow, but that takes some time. So it ha it'll have to get a bit larger before it causes a problem. But I have a small clown knife right now. Okay, as I stated the last couple of weeks in the general goldfish department, we have many different butterfly koi that have just come in. And what you're seeing is the first part of what will, I think, become better and better as the weeks come. But look at the lemon cream color of this, this one right here that has the yellow and white. Just absolutely beautiful fish. You can see there's a good bit of quantity there. And another exceptionally cool thing that we have that's safe for your ponds, even in cold water, are the Japanese trapdoor snails. These are really cool, not only for the pattern of the shell, but for the actual animal itself. So exceptionally cool there. One other goldfish uh, I'd like to mention this week are the large black moors that came in. Very beautiful. Uh, they've got a great black and chocolate color around the center body. Just beautiful, beautiful fish. Something else we have not had in a while is the silver arowana. Beautiful fish, of course. Uh, now, everybody knows that, that knows what an arowana is, that they get very large, uh, and they do so fairly rapidly. But if you want the ultimate uh, river fish, in my opinion, Amazonian type fish that's different, that's amazing. This is a surface dwelling fish. It spends 90% of its time on the surface looking for things to catch outside of the water. Uh, silver arowana might be for you. Okay, so we got in some medium Oscars this week. We got in, I think, we also got in some albino tiger Oscars uh, right beside those. So I know a lot of you have been coming and asking about Oscars recently. While I have not got any exceptionally large ones right now, and we know those that can happen at any time on any day, I did get some nice mediums in, in both the Tiger Oscars, the Red Oscars, and the Albino Tiger Oscars. We haven't got in the plant order yet, but it is coming. Uh, and I wanted to pose in front of this because every day it gets a little bit older and a little bit more beautiful. Great job, Ryan. Uh, lots coming your way as far as live plants, and I'm going to harp on this a lot in the videos to come. Uh, we're also, once we get this move taken care of and we're back where we need to be with just a normal functioning store, if that ever will happen, we will uh, start doing a bunch more plant videos and a bunch more education because that is where fishy business is going. So, uh, is we want to get you guys all keeping live plants and more natural type of freshwater tanks and biotopes. That'll make Richard Bullard very happy and that'll make me happy too. Okay, so your freshwater question of the week, the answer to the question of the week is nothing. Put on your answer, nothing. We're making it very easy this week. So if you watch the whole video, thank you. Your answer is nothing. And uh, go to the website and let's enter and win a, win a gift certificate. Have a great week.